Um, hello everybody, nice to see you all. I hope you're doing fine. Today we talk about environmental issues. This is uh, the first of my videos in this format, so um, don't be shy to give me some feedback about that. Uh, so your home assignment will be to read about environment and the way the, the problems that we have uh, on our planet. But so far, I decided to give you a small talk about uh, the problems that we have in general and uh, why, in my opinion, people do not act decisively yet. The governments, the countries do not act uh, for sure in order to uh, cooperate and tackle this problem, solve this problem, or at least try to find the solution in a large scale. So, um, uh, this is the plan for my presentation. We're going to talk about natural disasters first, then um, discuss. I will discuss some of the human caused problems that we have uh, concerning water pollution, air pollution, and soil pollution, earth pollution, of course. Then I will deviate a bit uh, into the game theory and talk about prisoner's dilemma and uh, try to explain what this is so that actually in the end you will understand uh, as me why governments and the people like you and me don't care too much about uh, the environment. So uh, without further ado let's talk about natural disasters and our planet Earth. So uh, as a uh, as I see it, our planet is like the best kind of place we live in, but um, it could be better. It could be better. It could be worse, like in Venus, on Venus or Mars. But it could be better. There are lots of natural disasters happening every week, every month. Some of them are huge. Uh, some of them are really small and local. Uh, you can read about some of them or watch uh, news reports about some of them if they are too big or and some of them are really really local and you uh, probably have never heard of them if you're not from that place so earthquakes and tsunami are pretty huge so tsunami is basically a big wave that is caused by an underground earthquake under the sea so volcano eruptions or volcanic eruptions are uh, is the the other thing that we cannot control, but uh, we also cannot control floods. It's when rivers uh, go pretty crazy and start you know flooding everything. Uh, the opposite situation uh, is when there is too little rain uh, and it's called uh, drought. Uh, then we have some prob natural disasters connected with uh, winds, like hurricanes, severe storms, tornado tornadoes, and uh, well, the only thing I remember about tornadoes is that uh, well, uh, people choose some names for huge tornadoes based on their scale. So. So far, uh, our planet uh, has uh, well, balanced all these things. So all these severe natural disasters, they look pretty uh, bad for us humans because we're so tiny and we live not, uh, not for so long. But uh, on the grand scale, on the scale of the whole planet's life, these are just minor events that uh, the planet kind of uses to balance things out and sometimes it leads to mass extinctions or like, uh, the most part of the wildlife or the, the living creatures um, inhabiting the planet die out so there have been five of them uh, some of the scientists even say and uh, suggest that we are now in the middle of the sixth one but um, well it's up to you whether to believe that or not the point is that our lives uh, lifespan is too short to actually see the um, the ch rate of change 
understand what's going on on a grand scale so we we are very limited in this term so in terms of perception here but uh well things are changing and uh, the human uh impact the factor of uh, our lives uh, of our culture and economics and the way we produce things and consume things is now affecting nature and the planet in a more dramatic in a more uh, in a more obvious way let's say uh, than it was uh, two three five hundred years ago probably you read the reports about climate changes the ozone layers depletion uh, and the pollution scales and of course the greenhouse effect so uh, more than seven billion people now live on this planet and this number uh, is increasing and there is probably this number is not going to uh, go down anytime soon uh, even the coronavirus will not affect that uh, I'm sure of it so our the way of our, our living our culture and economics that is part of the culture is uh, it directly affects uh, the nature and it is only natural because Oh, well, the purpose of culture is to change uh, the uh, environment around us so that we could live on, we could live and prosper. So uh, humans are different from other species on this planet because other species try to adapt themselves biologically to um, suit the environment and we humans develop culture in order to adapt the environment for our biology for our needs for our uh, requirements demands wishes and dreams so and that leads nowadays to some uh, disbalance or distortion in this balance of, of forces on the planet i'm talking about pollution i'm talking about this huge uh, waste problem we have we produce a lot of waste a lot of garbage and we need a proper way to, you know, keep it or probably reuse that. Uh, uh, but we are not developing that too much, unfortunately. And of course, there is overpopulation in some places. I'm not talking. Uh, I'm not saying that there are too many people on the planet. Of course not. There is pretty much. Uh, there is a lot of space for everybody and a lot of resources, but in some regions in some places the it gets really really crowded you probably remember some pictures of tokyo and uh in uh, most cases these people live in our overcrowded slums that are really in poor condition as you can see here the, the, this is not how people how human beings are supposed to live but uh in the 21st century but these slums exist uh, they are poorly built, they are very, uh, very dense in population, so if something happens, if the disease breaks out or a fire breaks out, the death toll will be really, really huge. Lots of people are going to die, so this is a huge risk, having a slum in your, in your vicinity. So, um, let's talk in more detail about uh, some kinds of pollution. Uh, first, uh, the earth pollution, the soil pollution, uh, it's basically connected, majorly connected to uh, agriculture or the culture of cultivating land in order to produce some crops. So, of course, we also use our land to uh, uh, dump some waste. Waste dumps are, um, get really, really huge, especially if we talk about like, large cities, large urban areas, dumps are a big problem or uh, keeping waste around is a big problem. Uh, but agriculture itself affects uh, the environment too. We use a lot of fertilizers and we grow, we also grow crops uh, that are foreign. We can grow crops that are foreign to this environment and uh, growing crops so aggressively cultivating like, the um, plants that we need and getting rid of the plants that we don't want to grow uh, will distort the environment and uh, endangers some of the plant species and also 
the wildlife because some of the wildlife, some of the animals and uh, insects, they only uh, will eat this sort of indigenous plant, not the other. But, so by cutting it down, we uh, reduce their chances of survival. And also, of course, the deforestation and the extensive uh, wood production or lumber production is what also affects the environment in a great, on a greater scale. We understand that, but we still go on. So, uh, next we go to the water pollution. It should be mentioned that, well, one of the uh, biggest problems here is also plastic waste that is floating around, that flows around the, uh, all, the, all, all the continents, probably except uh, Antarctica. So, uh, the waste that is accumulating in the oceans doesn't uh, doesn't go down, doesn't go uh, underwater. It starts floating, and it forms these huge um, islands, so to say. Uh, and this uh, and it also affects the wildlife in in the oceans. Yes, uh, birds and fish uh, try to eat plastic waste, and they die uh, in a horrible uh, with a horrible death. And uh, so, also the uh, the other problem that is um, not so widely discussed is the problem of overfishing. We, uh, in order to cover our uh, need for food because of overpopulation in some areas, we fish too much. We, uh, in industrial scale, we fish a lot and uh, some of the species uh, in the ocean and in the rivers get endangered because of that, and get, they actually go extinct. And uh, the third thing that I should mention is like the climate change also affects the wildlife in the ocean, because if, uh, when the temperature increases, you remember that from physics or chemistry, with the increase of temperature, uh, the amount of oxygen that uh, can be dissolved in water decreases so that uh, fish and wildlife that breathe underwater cannot do that anymore. So they, can, and they have to move to some cooler places and they, are, they face some, some other species whose habitats they invade. So it, um, creates a disbalance in the world, but um, yeah, so let's move on uh, and talk about this climate change and mainly this is uh, because of the air pollution. So one of the things uh, that I should mention before we move on to the greenhouse effect itself is that, um, well, air pollution is not only about the greenhouse effect and carbon dioxide, it is also about uh, some various chemicals that are um, flying in the air, especially in the uh, cities, in urban, um, in urban areas, because of the production sites, because of uh, the heavy traffic. So uh, this also uh, reduces the ozone layer in some of the places there are the holes in the ozone layer and that also leads to uh, well m increase in the ultraviolet radiation can cause skin cancer and so on and uh, so various chemicals are also present in the air and they are toxic to uh, to the species to animals and they're toxic to people uh, like lead uh, and some some other metals uh, poisoning. This is really heavy and uh, it's hard to control. So the, the level of metals in your uh, body builds up. So that and it gradually intoxicates you. So you need to take care about your environment and see if you live in a, in a not air polluted area. So, uh, but the most important thing is, of course, the huge carbon dioxide emissions because we're burning fossil fuels that we dig from the ground or ex somehow extrapolate from the ground as we do with oil. So we produce a lot of oil products, uh, petrol, kerosene, 
and so on so we burn that in a huge amounts of uh, coal of course coal is also a fossil fuel so we burn all of this in order to produce heat in order to um, travel somewhere by air or by by water by by uh, car so um, and this adds up to the greenhouse effect the greenhouse effect uh, as you can see you probably know that it is mainly caused by um, carbon dioxide but the other main uh, contributor to the greenhouse effect is uh, water vapor so basic basically when, uh, the, this uh, as I understand this situation can increase uh, pretty fast and dramatically it can get worse because with the increase of temperature with this uh, carbon dioxide creating the greenhouse increasing the greenhouse effect or it can also um, increase the amount of water vapor and the water vapor itself will increase the greenhouse effect and uh, it can lead to some extents that we cannot can no longer control uh, and so uh, about the greenhouse effect as you can see on the slide uh, this is uh, oh sorry this is uh, the representation of a carbon dioxide molecule it is pretty flat it's one dimensional as you can see um, it's just one direction just a straight line but it has a very unique some, some unique properties in terms of uh, binding infrared radiation so the solar uh, energy uh, with the visible and ultraviolet radiation and uh, of course the infrared radiation comes uh, on earth and it heats the earth a bit so uh, and the excess of this heat it, it needs to like, go back into space and because our planet is not a uh, it's not a sun it radiates this heat only in infrared radiation but in this infrared radiation is in the values and the wavelengths that uh, this tiny molecule can keep and reflect back to earth so when there is a layer of uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere it basically acts as a window as a as a glass window for the greenhouse so that it lets the heat in but doesn't let it out because the heat uh, getting to our planet is what like, all the spectrum and uh, the whole spectrum and it, the planet tries to get rid of the excessive heat by uh, only in this short uh, infrared portion of uh, the spectrum and the carbon dioxide doesn't let it do that so uh, greenhouse effect uh, is a natural thing for atmospheric planets uh, it's it's a good one because I like it when it's warm when it is warm uh, but not when it is too warm too hot uh, so it should be balanced out and actually there has always been some greenhouse effect but uh, the way it is increasing now with the way the temperature and uh, the average temperatures are increasing now is too fast and you can't deny that so um, now after we discuss that let's deviate a bit and talk about the prisoner's dilemma that I mentioned before so uh, that's a, a hypothetical situation from the game theory and uh, just to need to listen to my explanation imagine that you and some other guy are caught by the police because you did something wrong so uh, this is you and this is the other guy so and the police uh, offers you a deal so you can betray your partner and uh, probably you're free to go or you can of course you can keep silent but you need to understand that uh, the other person the other prisoner has the same choice so your options are either to betray your partner and you get a smaller sentence or you, you get free you go free immediately or if you keep silence silent you uh, get some small sentence if he also uh, keeps silence 
or if he chooses to betray you, in this case you will get this huge sentence for both of you. Uh, he will say that you did all of that and he was just innocent. And you could do the same. So, um, there is a, a table that represents both of the choices. The problem is that you and the other prisoner cannot communicate. You cannot agree what to do. You need to decide for yourself by calculating or understanding what kind of decision the other guy, the other uh, player, will make. So, um, and he does that too, of course, you do that simultaneously. So, obviously, um, what is the right thing to do here? So, let's see, say that you choose to remain silent. So, and that puts you in a huge risk. So, you either the best case scenario here is that you that your partner remains silent too and you get just one year in prison and you'll be fine in a year but if he uh, confesses if he chooses to betray you well he will be let go and you will serve with like, 20 years in prison like whole your life in prison uh, and you understand that given that choice your other partner, the, the prisoner B, will probably, will, will most likely also confess. And the, there is no point in uh, you know, keeping remaining silent then. You need to talk and confess too, so that you both will have like five year time in prison, but not 20. So, and uh, that leads us to this situation that logically thinking, by thinking logically in this pure uh, or imaginary situation, you both have to betray each other and confess and you will serve five years time. So this is uh, not the best case scenario. The best case is when both of you keep silent, but in this situation this is almost impossible because if you keep silent you are at risk and if he keeps silent, silent, he is also at risk and uh, he doesn't want to do that and you know that he doesn't want to do that and he knows that you know and so on so you both have to choose this um, betrayal option here and this is called Nash Equilibrium this is the situation in any conflict in any game that uh, when moving from this uh, strategy you 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 receive disadvantage even if like both of you move like well if you both remain silent you will get a huge advantage but you can't because by uh, stepping down by surrendering and deciding to remain silent you put yourself in a disadvantage so this is an equilibrium uh, this is a situation, a Nash equilibrium, a situation where nobody uh, can well, step down and like, receive 20 years in prison sentence. So, but um, in real life, I, I tried, frankly speaking, I tried to uh, conduct this experiment in my classes, and most of the times people. Um, against my beliefs, against my expectations, uh, people that didn't know each other well, like your classmates, your groupmates, uh, they chose to uh, remain silent and not betray each other, both of them, and they both won. And uh, when I try to understand why this happens, because it is, uh, it seems to be irrational. It seems to be. Uh, there seems to be no logic in that, but uh, when I try to understand that, I realize that there is uh, almost always there is a third party. So the, this scenario, this pure scenario, is very rare. There is always something else that these two prisoners have to consider, some other consequences, rather than just 20 years in prison. And these consequences can be some revenge from the mafia boss that you both. Uh, are responsible for or uh, some um, reputation that you need to uphold that was probably the, the most common case in my classrooms 
people thought that if they betrayed, uh, their classmates would think bad about them. So they c had to uphold their reputation, uh, maintain uh, good behavior. So they tried to, um, well, not betray each other. And of course, uh, everybody understood that this is not a real scenario. This is not real life, just an imaginary situation. That's why probably they didn't uh, act as I expected. So there is all, there are always some circumstances, almost always some circumstances, some third parties involved in these interactions uh, outside the prison. Um, for example, uh, well, I remain silent because I know that if I betray my partner, uh, my boss um, from the my my gang will uh, find me and kill me, and that is worse than twenty years in prison. So. Just knowing that there is a third party that will um, punish the betray the betrayer, somebody who betrayed, so makes me uh, understand that remaining silent is better. Also, because my partner knows that uh, the one who betrays will be punished, and that's why. Uh, this presence of the third party helps to shift the Nash equilibrium to this part where we both keep silent and this is beneficial for both of us so and uh, this is uh, uh, this is basically how governments uh, societies countries uh, trade banks and basically the human trust to each other into each other works um, because or with the first interaction with somebody that I don't know uh, if there was no government if there was no police I wouldn't trust that person because he will probably betray me because he or uh, if he doesn't betray me I will betray him and he understands that so uh, without the governments without the police without the third party that will punish uh, the, uh, the other person who does wrong uh, there could be no trust actually and no banks working and stuff like that so um, this is what prisoners dilemma is but now let's consider the main question for today uh, this uh, the question is why so many countries don't care about the environment that much, about the planet that we live on that much. And uh, as I'm trying to explain that, so um, fighting, uh, uh, tackling these economic or uh, environmental issues is pretty expensive for the countries. It's a huge amount of work, it's a huge amount of uh, changing the routine, it involves uh, industry it involves production it involves some pretty expensive technologies and so uh, the governments that choose to protect the environment at all costs risk uh, because they are at the disadvantage there are many other countries many other players in this prisoner's dilemma and uh, they uh, by choosing to root for the environment and uh, try to um, tackle the environmental problems they uh, get disadvantage so because of the production is expensive you you know that uh, on a personal level too well a personal story when i try to um sort my, my waste into the, the biological waste also some some uh, like apple pe peels from one part, like aluminum cans to the other side and in the other bag. I found myself in the disadvantage because I have to pay for the both bags. I have to find the proper uh, proper time to uh, dispose the, this uh, garbage properly into a proper um, van or proper place. So I found myself in the disadvantage and I saw that all the uh, all other people don't do that and uh, I had to go back to my usual waste collecting routines that are just tossing everything randomly in one bag and then tossing that into uh, the garbage collecting van or something. 
So, um, and also um, these um, effects, these environmental, ecological effects, seem to be long term. Uh, we're talking about like two, three hundred years into the future, and uh, human life is much shorter. And politicians understand that, and that's why probably this um, agenda of environment control of uh, uh, eco-friendly sustainable development is so rare on uh, in politics because what a politician needs to gain popularity what a politician needs uh, in his program is uh, short-term decisions about uh, and short-term promises about economic uh, economic prosperity or uh, so some political freedoms and rights uh, and that sort of thing not something so long-term and far away as some ecological disaster to be averted so uh, as you can understand well there are lots of examples of course that we have signed the Kyoto Protocol there is a Paris climate agreement uh, in 2016 if I'm not mistaken there was a, a Paris agreement right so uh, but Probably, if you uh, saw the news or read some articles on the internet, the United States uh, decided to, um, well, basically abandon this agreement after signing. They uh, they left the agreement party um, like this year uh, because it wasn't beneficial for them for the economy, as they as they say, and uh, well this is not bad this doesn't affect anything actually because all these kyoto protocols and climate agreements are purely recommendational there is no third party there is no international organization that can actually punish a country uh, for uh, you know not following this protocol these protocols are recommendations only they are not uh, they, they do not um involve or any kind of um, punishments or sanctions against the countries uh, not involved in this agreement so um, there is no third party and this is actually a prisoner's dilemma with hundreds of different players who each of uh, whom look at each other which country does what and so they don't want to be in a disadvantage uh, they don't want to have a disadvantage against the others by you know starting the um, environment friendly production first so they do something in order to uh, mitigate the situation but they are not doing this thing you know, on a large scale the same way as uh, we don't do much about we don't care much about the environment now because this puts us in a huge disadvantage uh, in comparison to other people who don't care about the environment uh, those who don't care about the environment will uh, travel to work faster because they choose a car not a bike they will uh, uh, will eat a, a more tasty food from um, from the canteen or cafe that serves plastic um, knives and forks not the one that the ones that you brought from home by yourselves so um, short-term advantages are kind of they look more um, valuable now uh, rather than the, this long-term far-fetched uh, idea of some disaster in the future a uh, vague idea uh, that comes from the future so um, this is it as for me this is the answer to the questions why don't countries cooperate in order to uh, tackle the problems with the environment because it costs so much and there is no third party to punish the countries and I'm afraid that uh, well the only hope is that we get to actually dealing with these problems um, early enough to be able to deal with these problems because uh, the, our planet is a very big but very complex system and if 
something goes wrong with it, it's really hard to fix it. Uh, and uh, I hope that it will not be late in the future when we actually start to care. So now some keywords. Um, I need to wrap this up because I'm speaking too long. So um, some keywords that we need to um, remember. So of course there is the, this word environment the, and some adjectives based on that environmental and environment friendly. So these adjectives are pretty cool. They are keywords that you could use in your uh, speeches and uh, essays on the environment. Sustain is a good verb. Um, it means but uh, this cool uh, phrase sustainable development is uh, it describes uh, production with uh, zero or almost zero waste so that when you sustain yourself and you keep the environment uh, like safe this is what sustainable development means so uh, we also have some key ideas like the Nash equilibrium that I discussed uh, the greenhouse effect carbon dioxide fertilizer you need to remember all these things. Fertilizers are the, the uh, chemicals that you put in the soil so that the plants grow faster or bigger or uh, healthier. Uh, then we got this beautiful verb uh, to emit and we have a noun emission. Vipusk um, Vidilinia. It's usually about some gases and chemicals so uh, and you can also emit light. Uh, so then we got some longer words uh, related to problems. Overfishing. Over means too much, so fish too much, that's so overfishing. Over irrigation. Deforestation is when you cut down trees uh, in industrial manner. Overpopulation, so much too, too much population. And urbanization. Urbanization is uh, also kind of a problem nowadays. Uh, then some other keywords to uh, related to the topic of natural disaster of course um, that are um, kind of in the opposite to the technological or man-made disasters and mass extinction of course also a key word so now it's time to wrap it up and uh, talk about the homework so from on this week uh, um, by the next week I expect you to complete these two portions, these two PDF files. Uh, four exercises in the vocabulary practice, uh, just to pick up some words about nature and issues. And uh, this part, this PDF is from uh, the our book by Shevtsova. You need to read this uh, little text uh, in the exercise 21 about environmental issues and uh, complete these two exercises, 22 and 24, in order to gain some vocabulary. All of these exercises are vocabulary exercises, uh, so make sure to remember some of the words that you don't know yet. And uh, for the following week, in a week, from March 25 to March 20, 31, I will be expecting your essays on the topic of uh, environmental issues. So uh, you can write them now, you can write them next week. Uh, yeah, so um, I will, I have sent and I will send some of the links in your uh, emails for the, your, your folders on my Google Drive so that you could use this um, data you can use this materials, this media, and also um, well, this present, this very presentation. Uh, so you could use that uh, for your essays. And I will be expecting your essays and your homework in your dedicated, in your specified folder, also where you can edit stuff, you can create folders, and you can upload your um, homework there. So uh, I also recommend you to use Foxit Reader and uh, like add some comments onto the PDF so that I could see that, uh, that you changed it. You don't have to print it out and uh, write by your hand. You can just type it, some comments 
on the PDF so that you could see that you filled in the gaps or uh, chose the proper options and stuff like that. So, um, well, thank you very much for listening to this uh, presentation. I hope that you learned at least something new about the environment. Of course, this is my personal opinion. I use some of the scientific data, uh, but um, you don't have to trust me. If you have a, another opinion, I will be happy to uh, read about it in, in your essays. So feel free to submit them. I will check them all and comment uh, in the same way uh, in, uh, uh, in the Google Drive. So thank you uh, and goodbye. See you next week.